Coming up on my Big Fat Pet Makeover. You guys ready to see what Nico weighs? Oh, Let's do it. Scared, oh, my gosh. Coco is not a very good emotional support dog. Oh, Coco, no! I'm excited to see Nico. Nico! Across the country, pet owners are facing an epidemic in their own homes. A crisis affecting more than half our nation's pets. Obesity. Wow. I'm Travis Brorson. Caller T. Professional dog trainer and pet expert. Yay. I believe everything has to work together to make a healthy pet. I look at lifestyle. She lays down while she eats. Behavioral problems. Are you kidding me? And general well-being. <laughs> but getting the owners on board That's a lot. isn't always easy. Are you guys messing with me on that amount of food? It's my job to educate them right here. and empower their pets. I can do this. I'm on a mission to help these big pets make big changes oh. because we owe them the happiest and healthiest lives they can have. This is my Big Fat Pet Makeover. Nico. Nico. My name is Summer. My name is Leo. We have a big household. We have the, the four kids. Three dogs. We've been married for 18 years. 18 glorious years. Glorious years. <laughs> and we have a mini Sharpe named Nico. Nico is probably the most chill dog that you will ever meet. He's just super, super lazy. Nico's different than all of our other dogs, just in the simple fact that he doesn't need, like, interaction. You don't have to do anything. Like, he's just happy being content, just sleeping. I would be sitting there working, and all of a sudden I would hear, like, this incessant snoring. And I, like, look around, I'm like, what is that? Oh my gosh, it's him. He doesn't chase balls. He doesn't go after sticks. He doesn't, he's not interested at all in any type of toy. So if, if it's food related, he'll, he likes that. But other than that, he doesn't yeah. mess with anything. I probably noticed Nico has put on weight probably about like a year and a half ago, maybe. We just haven't figured out what has changed. When you look at him, it's like you see the sides of his stomach, like when he's like trotting around, like his stomach is like protruding. And yeah. we're like, okay, he never used to look like that. And when you see Nico from the behind and he's decided to trot, yeah, those little booty cheeks are really moving. <laughs> because the fact that the kids have so much going on, we're really busy, but we also like to spend a lot of time together. I think Nico probably got left behind because of the fact that we think that him being pudgy is cute. It's not really cute anymore. And we want him to live as long as possible. Nico means everything to me, to us. Like, I couldn't even imagine him not being around, which is what scares me now because you know, I know that we need to do better. I know that we need to take care of him more. And it hurts me to know that we might be the cause of some of the issues that he's had, you know? And if it means him life or death, like, I would never forgive myself if I didn't do everything I could to make him healthy, especially for our kids, because they, they, lo they love him. You know, we love him. I'm here to meet Nico, an unhealthy mini Sharpe who lives with a very healthy and active family. I'm gonna find out why Nico's having these problems and what I can do to help. This must be Nico. This is Nico. Hi, Nico. You look a little hefty. Obviously, Nico's a little overweight. Somebody want to tell me how this happened? We don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just because, like, he's so lazy. He spends most of his time sleeping. That's his jam. That's his jam? <laughs> OK. Well, I mean, you guys look like you're all in great shape. Have you always been this fit? Oh, no. Been like this for about five years now. I lost about 30 pounds before one flight of stairs, I get dizzy and start passing out. <laughs> I'm not going back to what I was. Uh, yeah, you feel better. Oh, I feel a lot better. Do you guys notice the difference in dad? Oh, yes. yes. He's oh, always yeah, trying to yeah. race me. He thinks yeah. he can beat me, but he can't. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sounds like your family's pretty competitive. Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> Who's faster? Me. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, Summer, tell me about you. Um, I'm a manager at a gym. You know, I work out six, six days a week, usually, um, and I feel awesome. The family understands the importance of being healthy, but why aren't they applying that to Nico? Tell me about all the dogs, like their exercise routine on a daily basis. Um, for the most part, they pretty much play with each other in the backyard. The other two definitely play a lot more than Nico does. He just kind of likes to go to the bathroom and then wait by the door to be let back in. Mm. How much do the dogs get to eat? Um, Nico and Sox eat two cups a day, okay. once a day, and then Simba eats three. Okay, and those are, are those measuring cups or just cup cups? Measuring cups. Measuring cups. Okay. 
From what they've told me, they're overfeeding Nico, and I've got a good idea about what else is making him gain weight. So we're going outside to try a little activity that'll put my theory to the test. We're gonna play a little game. You okay. guys up for it? Yeah. 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 Awesome. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a circle, um, just kind of spread out this way. We want Nico to be in the middle. So yeah, that's great. If he's on the opposite side of the circle from you, I want you to call him to you. When okay. he comes to you, you can just pet him, and then somebody on the other side of the circle, I want you to try to call him back. Why don't you go ahead and go first? Okay. Nico. Come here, Nico. Nico. <laughs> Nico. Nico. Come here. There we go. Come here, Nico. Come here, Nico. Okay. Nico, come here. Nico. Come here, baby. Nice. OK, pet him. Now, Summer, how about you try? Come here, Nico. Come here. Good nice. Boy. I'm trying to teach the family that the problem isn't that Nico's lazy, but rather he just needs a little motivation. But he's losing steam quick because he is so out of shape. Nico, come on. Come here. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is because I wanted to see how long he would play. And he didn't do that bad, but yeah. he clearly didn't last very long. No. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think we all know the problem, yeah. Yeah. which is? His weight. He's overweight. Mm -hmm. Overweight. Yeah. You know, you guys were pretty clear that you're like, Nico just doesn't even want to play. And we weren't even using toys. We have to find things that are going to motivate him, which start with you guys. You're his family. Now that they're starting to realize that Nico isn't lazy, it's time to really open their eyes by getting a proper weight on him. A healthy mini Sharpe should weigh somewhere between 25 and 40 pounds. And I have a strong feeling Nico is not in that range. You guys ready to see what Nico weighs? All right, let's do right. it. Right. He's scared. 50 pounds. Oh, dang. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy crap. Do you know how much a mini Sharpe is supposed to weigh? Anywhere between 25 and 40 pounds. Oh my wow. Gosh. Summer, people that are overweight, what type of problems do they run into if they continue to be overweight? High blood pressure, high cholesterol, death. I, I mean, I tell people, you're going to pay for fitness one way or another. You're either going to pay now with sweat and hard work, or you're going to pay later with prescriptions, medications, hospital bills. So you got to choose, you know, how do you want to pay? <laughs> I think the same question could be asked to you guys, you know? How do you want to pay? I think we need to make some changes, huh? Oh, yeah, big time. Summer knows what it means to be healthy. It's what she does for a living. So Nico being 25% overweight is a huge eye-opener for her. But it's going to take a little surprise to get Leo and the kids on board. I want you guys to see something. This could be a little bit shocking. OK? OK. Oh what the God. heck? <laughs> I want you guys to see something. This could be a little bit shocking. OK? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> wow, before wow. and after. Cool. Come stand up here, Dad. Wow. Oh, yeah. We all met you of me. <laughs> this was Dad then. Mm -hmm. This is Dad now. Yeah. Big difference, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Does this remind you of anybody else? Nico. Nico. Did Dad get from this to that by himself? No, not at all. Who helped? We all helped. It took all of us working together consistently, especially because we had to change everything. While they were working out in the living room, we would all be behind, and we would just be copying what they were doing, trying to work yeah. out, too. We had no clue what we were doing, but it yeah. looked fun, so we started doing it. You made it fun? Yeah. yeah. And what did we do for Nico today? We made it fun. Made it fun, fun. Yeah. yeah. And we did it together, right? Mm-hmm. I think seeing dad's before and after picture will really inspire the kids to motivate Nico the same way they did with their dad. They did it once as a family, and I think they can do it again for Nico. It's important to tell you guys, you knew exactly how much you were feeding him, which is more than most people I see. The biggest problem is you were actually feeding him the correct amount for a dog that's supposed to weigh 50 pounds. Oh. So that's problem number one. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. 
Whoops. <laughs> They're feeding Nico two cups per day, which is fine for a 50 pound dog, but for a mini Sharpe, it should be at least half a cup less. I have one more surprise for the family that is perfect to keep them motivated. I have pumping up Nico activity oh. challenge. Wow. <laughs> it's gonna track who's doing what. So the way this is gonna work is everybody has their own row. I'm gonna let you as a family fill in the four activities that you feel fit your family the best. It can be anything from going on walks to playing fetch. As part of the chart, we have these fun little tabs that will coordinate with the activity. You can take the tabs, just stick them by your name, and whoever has done the most work with Nico is going to get something really cool. Who's going to win? Me. Me. <laughs> Me? Hello. I, <laughs> Mom, I don't I'm know. I'm the motivator around yep. here, so yep. let's go. I'm with you guys the whole way. So anytime you guys need anything, reach out to me. Definitely. Group hug, group hug, everybody in. Nico weighed in at 50 pounds. To safely get Nico down to his 42 pound target weight in four months, I'm going to decrease his food intake from two cups per day to one and one third cups and increase his exercise to 20 minutes of activity three times a day. I'm challenging the Fillmore family to make significant progress on the pumping up Nico activity chart by the time I return in two weeks. We want to help him, we love him. If this is something that can save his life and make his life longer, why would we not do that? We know we're going to do it because we've done it ourselves. I'm Sari Henley. I'm Davis Henley, and we've been married for 25 years. We have two dogs, Rusty and an overweight Legoto named Coco. Coco is my emotional support dog. She is very, very affectionate. We think of her like a furry teddy bear. Coco brings a lot of joy into my life. After having breast cancer, I was diagnosed with PTSD, and I went into a deep depression, you know, worrying if it's gonna come back, and was prescribed an emotional support dog. And so getting a dog seemed to be the perfect solution for me. Coco was an emotional support dog for a disabled child. That didn't work out but she had been kenneled for quite a while. Spending 20 plus hours a day in a crate, not getting any exercise. Coco was very heavy when we picked her up. She was 42 pounds. She lost most of her training. Coco was so uh, out of shape. She, you know, she could barely walk a mile. Coco's on a very controlled diet. We try very hard not to give her table scraps or any kind of human food. We ended up not getting as well a trained dog as we had expected. She's got uh, a bad barking habit. She likes to jump on people. She also is something of a compulsive eater. She believes she's out foraging for the food. She will pick up just about anything. Drop it. Food. Coco, no. Napkins, cigarette butts. Leave it. You name it, Coco's picking it up. I know what it's like to not feel healthy. I was very lucky that I was able to go and get help with that. And I want Coco to have that help. I want her to be able to live her life to the fullest, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to allow her that lifestyle. I'm looking forward to learning more about Coco's issues, especially her eating off the street. If you don't have control over your dog's behavior, chances are you don't have control over what they're eating either. So tell me who we have. This is Rusty, our Boston Terrier. This is Coco, Coco the Legoto. She's my emotional support dog. Emotional support dogs provide comfort through affection for individuals suffering from mental or emotional issues. But unlike service dogs, they aren't required to perform tasks or have the same level of training. When we first got her, she was about 42 pounds. We're not sure what she weighs now, but she is still overweight. What's Coco's diet like? Our vet put her on a controlled diet, and it seems to be working. We feed her one and a quarter cups a day. We supplement it with canned green beans so that she fills up. Okay. But she still whines quite a bit at mealtime. 
She'll stand and bark at you. And forages when she's out walking, <laughs> sniffing around, looking for something to sure. eat. Cocoa foraging on the street is something I see a lot. I like to call it sidewalk surfing. That's a big problem. What made you, what? There we go. <laughs> Little exercise. All right. <laughs> Sari truly needs a dog to relieve stress, not cause it. But unfortunately, Coco's all over the place, barking, jumping on the couch. She's not being supportive to Sari, which is unacceptable behavior. We have to get her to her ideal weight. I, I want to take a look at what's happening as far as the weight goes and see how we can get her where she needs to be uh, the most efficiently and the most healthy. The most concerning of Coco's issues is the sidewalk surfing, which is a dangerous habit because there's all kinds of things on the street and sidewalk that can be harmful to dogs. Let's see how bad this situation really is. Good girl, Good Coco. So now, as you talk to her, let's just look straight ahead and I just want you to walk. Okay. Good girl. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh Coco, no. no Coco. Drop it. Good girl, Coco. Now, as you talk to her, let's just look straight ahead and I just want you to walk. Okay. Good girl. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Coco. No, drop Coco. it. She Better got bow. a cigarette. If Sari and Davis want Coco to be healthy and lose this last bit of weight, she cannot be eating anything and everything off the street. Whatever's on the ground, we're competing with. Okay. So it's going to be as simple as we'll set something out. As we walk past it, if you hold her focus with the green bean, mm -hmm. we reward that behavior. Okay. So we're starting to teach her these things are out here, but if you look at mom, if you look at dad, something better happens. Now we're creating a new habit. So I've explained the technique. Let's test it out. So let's stay right there. Let me find something. That food wrapper. All right. That's some competition. So walk her past it without the green bean. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> now let's try redirecting Coco's attention with the green bean. Ready? Here we go. All right. See the difference? Yep. Yep. <laughs> she gave us a. Uh -uh. <laughs> Good. She's sneaky. She made a choice, and uh -huh. she made the right choice, and we reward it, and we move on. Good. <laughs> now that I've given Sari and Davis the first steps in correcting the sidewalk surfing, let's see how much Coco weighs. An adult Lagoto of Coco's size should weigh anywhere from 29 to 35 pounds. And when Sari and Davis got her, she was a heavy 42 pounds. Let's get a weight on Coco. Okay. All right. Coco weighs 39 pounds. Wow. We've been working hard. I, I was hoping she would be a little less than that. We're moving in the right direction from where she started. We can get her where she needs to be, but we have some work to do. Coco's not far off from being in her 29 to 35 pound range. But those four extra pounds mean she's still at least 10% overweight. Those pounds really add up for a dog her size. And like most issues, there isn't just one solution to fixing the problem. Consider Coco like a jigsaw puzzle. And the pieces that need to fit together are increasing exercise, preventing sidewalk surfing, learning basic obedience, and setting rules and boundaries. All these pieces need to come together for Sari and Davis to have a happy and healthy Coco. What were your thoughts on, on the weight? I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest. She still needs to lose weight. So I don't know, what do we do now? That's why I'm here. I think a realistic target weight for Coco is 35 pounds. The controlled diet is working. What we need to do now is take everything to the next level. One of the solutions that I have for you, a Fitbark. This will go on Coco's collar. It's going to track how far she goes on a daily basis. Another important element we touched on were the behavior issues that you're having. First and foremost is the sidewalk surfing, which can be very dangerous. But just using the food that she's already, you know, eating on a daily basis, you guys can reverse those behaviors. Okay. It's just gonna take time and consistency. It's gonna take you being focused. I can help hold you accountable as well as be your biggest cheerleader through this whole process. Coco weighed in at 39 pounds. To get Coco down to her 35 pound target weight, I'm going to keep her on the controlled diet of one and a quarter cups a day, but increase her exercise to two 45 minute walks per day. I'm also recommending they use Coco's daily serving of food for training to avoid additional calories. Lastly, Sari and Davis need to be consistent with their obedience training. 
including using higher valued items to redirect Coco's attention from the sidewalk surfing. Hopefully, Coco will have made some progress when I return in two weeks. I think that between the two of us working together, that, that we're gonna have a lot of success with this. Coco is very motivated and, <laughs> and I'm very motivated too. Coming up on my Big Fat Pet Makeover. At the count of three, I'm gonna drop the leash. You're gonna do your best to call Nico your way. Three, <laughs> two, one, go. Yeah, go, 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 go. It's been going great with Nico. He's enjoying us spending time with him. He really likes getting out for walks. Since I've taken him out a couple times, now he wants to go out. So we set up the Pumping Up Nico chart where we have blue as walking, green as running, yellow is playtime with the other dogs, and then red is dog park or taking him to like an outdoor mall. We're liking it, he's liking it. I've noticed he's become a lot more active all of a sudden. Travis really pointed out to us last time, you know, how Nico needs our motivation. We see that he wants to walk, he wants to play. It was just we weren't requiring that of him. We're just such a busy family that finding the time during the daylight hours that we can actually like get him out, um, that's been our only issue. We are a little bit anxious just because we don't really know what he's gonna say about it. Today I'm checking back in with the Fillmores at the gym that Summer manages. We're going to give Nico a little workout that'll get the entire family involved. And I'm excited to see what kind of progress they've made on the activity chart. I know you brought the board. Let's see how you did. Uh, that looks kind of sad. The family's showing me the chart and I'm a little disappointed that they haven't done more. I know they're very busy, but Nico's never gonna lose the weight unless they're willing to put in the work. Well, let's, let's talk about it here for a minute. Mom? It's just, I get home too late, so it's dark. Yeah. Like, I, I can't walk them in the dark. Is Nico scared of the dark? No, but maybe I am. Dad? I'm a little bit impressed. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to be on the board. Alexis, you're giving your dad a run for his money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you guys are so competitive, I've set up a little competition in here. To show the family that there's a variety of ways to exercise Nico, I'm introducing some indoor challenges that will tap into their competitive nature. For this activity, I've set up three workout stations for Nico. The wobble board to help strengthen his legs, the stabilizing donut for his core, and the cone drill for cardio, which are all activities that anyone can do at home. I'm gonna team you guys up. We're gonna have Summer and Aaliyah are gonna be on a team. Olivia and Alexis are gonna be on a team. Do it. <laughs> and then I paired up Dad and Isaiah on the team. Oh, same. then why don't we have a competition? We uh, already won. Oh, oh <laughs> you'll okay. see. I'm really looking today to see how you motivate Nico, like how you're encouraging him or how you're not. I'm trying to inspire the Fillmores to put in more effort so that Nico can have a chance at achieving his goals. Here's the big kicker. The winning team is gonna get three stickers each to go by their name on Pumping Up With Nico. Let's everybody head to your station. First up are Summer and Aaliyah on the wobble board. And so Let he just, guys. all fours get on here? Well, that's the goal. If you can okay. get all four of his feet on there, that would be, that would be the goal. Go, oh, Nico, you can do it. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on, go, come Nico. On. It's come okay, on. come on. Come on, Nico. Come, come on, baby. So look, I can do it. Look, come on, good boy. Good look, boy, see if you can get him up a little higher, great. Summer and Aaliyah did great, but we still have two teams to go. All right, gentlemen, we're gonna try to get him to get his two front paws up, however you wanna do it. Try to keep his paws up as long as you can, okay? Okay. Talk to him, Nico. cheer for him. Nico, right here. Hey, come on, boy, come on, come on. Right here. Nico, come on, oh. His body language is a reflection of your motivation right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's lacking. There you go. Awesome, there you, go. you guys. Yeah, awesome. Good boy. Dad and Isaiah definitely have their own spin on encouraging Nico. Let's see how Alexis and Olivia do. I want you to have Nico follow you as you backpedal in and out of the cones, okay? Okay. So here we go. Nico. Good. Good. That's okay. That's great. 
Good. Come here, Nico. Come here. Come here. Nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The entire family did a really good job at coaching Nico and proved that with the right encouragement, they can do just about anything. But putting in the effort is just a start. When working with these tools, they need to take baby steps so Nico can reach his target weight. I really wanted to see, you know, you guys encouraging him and talking to him, and you guys all did that. But there was a team that I felt did the best job today. And the winner is... I'm scared. Summer and Aaliyah. Hey, cool. yeah. I chose Summer and Aaliyah because of how well they did at consistently motivating Nico in a positive way. Mom and Aaliyah proved today, you know, you guys have what it takes to encourage Nico. What we're lacking is the effort. Mm -hmm. I want to see this thing filled up when I come back. Nico needs to be the big winner when this is over. Nico is on track with his eating habits, so I'm keeping him going with the same diet at one and a third cups a day. But when it came to Nico's activity chart, the family consistently fell short. So to make up for that, I'm upping his exercise to 25 minutes of activity three times per day. All in all, the family really needs to up their game on the pumping up Nico activity chart, or Nico will have little chance of meeting his target weight by the next time I see him in three and a half months. High fives all the way around. Nice job today. I think with the chart, Travis was disappointed that we haven't been putting in the effort, but we can do more. If we just come together as a family, I definitely think we can do it. Coming up on my Big Fat Pet Makeover. The last time I was here, one of the biggest problems she had was eating garbage off the street. And I want to see if you and Coco can walk past a napkin without her eating it. Coco's been doing really well. We've been really pleased with her progress. We walk Coco three miles every morning, and in the afternoon, we walk her two miles. Staying consistent with that is hard some days. We've been very, very strict with the diet. We, we measure Coco's food out every evening into a Ziploc bag, and we carry that bag with us. I'm pretty sure she's lost weight. Good girl. I actually noticed it a couple days ago that I can see a waistline on her when she gets ahead of me when we're walking. Coco doesn't seem to be lunging as much for uh, cigarette butts, uh, food wrappers. She will still go after a napkin. She loves a greasy downtown napkin. <laughs> I am looking forward to working with Travis today, and I know Coco's really excited to work with him. <laughs> Sorry has done great so far with Coco's diet and exercise. What I don't know is how the behavior is coming along. So I've asked Sari to meet me at a store to see how Coco behaves in a public place where dogs typically aren't allowed. Coco. There's Coco. <laughs> Vocally saying hello. She's very vocal today. <laughs> oh my. OK. Very vocal. Hoping she'll calm down a little bit. Sure. Why don't you fill me in on how things have been going? Things have been going pretty good with Coco. We're uh, we're really excited about her progress. Okay. We think we've done really well with the exercise. Yeah, I've been <laughs> checking with you on the Fit Mark. It looks really good. You've met your goal almost every day. Almost every day. And uh, I think Coco's losing <laughs> weight. She obviously hasn't met her goal today. <laughs> Maybe Not she's yet. begging for more exercise. Coco. I don't know. Kind of hard to Coco. talk over that. No isn't bark. It? No bark. Good no bark. Good job. Sorry is giving Coco a treat when she barks, which is rewarding the barking, completely opposite of what we're trying to achieve. So if she barks and we give her a treat, then you're actually rewarding her high anxiety and you're taking her to that next level. So the first moment that she stops barking, I'm going to reward that behavior. Five to 10 seconds go by, I'm going to give her another one. I'm not giving her time to go back into that barking mode. OK. I'm consistently rewarding the behavior I want her to continue to have, which is a calmer behavior. And it hasn't been more than a minute, and she's already laying down. You see her? Amazing. <laughs> By using Coco's daily portion of food for training, we're staying within her diet. Let's head inside and see how she does. All right. OK. Being an emotional support dog, Coco will need to behave in any situation to keep Sari calm, so we're here to test that out but it doesn't take long before Coco starts acting up. She's whining, she's barking, 
She's pulling on the leash. And she's jumping on people. Coco! When Coco almost knocks over a vase. Oh, Coco. Coco! Oh my God. I realize it's time to teach Sari a new technique to gain control over Coco. What happens is if we if we give him an inch, they take a mile. Okay. Right? The main thing I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I always have control of Coco, right? And then I'm guiding her to do what I want her to do. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold a short lead. So I just wanna give you a point of reference of where to hold. Okay. So I'm gonna tie a knot down here where I want your hand to be. Sari literally needs to keep Coco on a shorter leash, which is also the next step in correcting the sidewalk surfing. So we're headed to a nearby park to see how Sari and Coco do with the new technique. What we're gonna do is we'll go just a little slower and we'll just walk straight. We're just gonna walk down this path. So far, keeping Coco on a shorter leash is giving Sari more control, and with consistent practice, will help keep Coco's foraging nose off the ground. She walked right over the cigarette butt. That's great. Coco's definitely gotten better with the cigarette butts, but she's still trying to eat off the sidewalk. This won't be fixed overnight, but I've given Sari all the tools she needs to correct this behavior. Now it's up to her to put in the work. To get Coco where she needs to be, Sari must be consistent with her obedience training. Sari is doing well using Coco's daily portion of food for training, but needs to work on timing in order to reward positive behavior rather than encouraging the negative. I hope to see that Sari and Coco have turned all this around when I return in three and a half months. I'm here for you through this process, but you know we have to get her healthy. We have to get her to her ideal weight, and we have to get this under control. OK? <laughs> yes. So when I get back, I hope to see <laughs> literally a whole new Coco. <laughs> when I first met Nico, he would barely get up off the floor, and his family thought he was lazy. If the Fillmores haven't put in more work than I saw last time, then we might be setting ourselves up for quite a disappointment today. Since Travis is last year, I think things have been going awesome with Nico. He actually enjoys walking now. Like, as soon as he sees us going to the door, he, like, races there, or if he hears, like, the sound of his leash, he starts getting excited. So before, he never used to do that. Everybody seems to be in a good mood. <laughs> How's that pumping up Nico board looking? It's looking pretty filled out, which is the opposite of what Nico's looking like right now. Ooh, yeah. nice. lean and mean. We'll have to take a look at the board later, but I'm excited to see Nico. I'll go get him. OK. Nico! Oh my gosh, bud! Doesn't he look thinner? He does look thinner. Don't you think I did a good job? Look at you, buddy! Aww. How are you doing? Like a speedster coming out of there. <laughs> wow! He does look leaner, you guys. He looks so good. You can actually see like some of his ribs over here. You now. can. Yeah. I think that when Travis first saw him, he was pretty much blown away. I know that Nico looks thinner. I we notice it. So for somebody who hasn't seen him in a little while, he was like, oh my gosh, like they've really been working. Since we can clearly tell he's lost some weight, let's find out just how much he weighs. Oh yes. yes. Yeah? Oh yeah. Nico's definitely trimmed down, and like a true Sharpe, he's got his wrinkles back. But we still need to find out if he hit his target weight. The first time I was here, Nico weighed 50 pounds. We set a four-month target weight of 42 pounds. Let's see if Nico lost the weight. OK. All right. Okay. Nico weighs. Coming up on my Big Fat Pet Makeover. Where's Coco? I'm so excited to see her. I'll go get her. OK. Oh my gosh, Coco. The first time I was here, Nico weighed 50 pounds. We set a four month target weight of 42 pounds. Let's see if Nico lost the weight. Nico weighs 42.5. That's Whoa! pretty good. You did it! That's awesome! Right. Even though Nico came in half a pound shy of his target weight, he's still a huge success. The family showed me the pumping up Nico activity chart. Hey, they really turned things around. It's totally filled up with stickers, which is amazing, but it looks like the winner might just be too close to call. Looking at the chart, two of you have worked so hard 
that we have to have a tiebreaker. <laughs> it's come down between Summer and Alexis. Oh, oh Alexis, you can do it. Super Bowl. But I still have more yeah, than Yeah, no, but, <laughs> but it's not who has the most stickers, it's who put in the most work. So here's how it's gonna work. Alexa Summer, we'll have you two in a distance. I'm gonna hold Nico at the drop of the leash. You're gonna cheer Nico on and we'll see who he runs to. For this final challenge, I'm expecting that the one who spent the most time with Nico is the one he'll choose. And that will be our winner. The count of three, I'm gonna drop the leash. You're gonna do your best to call Nico your way. Alexis, are you ready? Yes. Summer, are you ready? Ready. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Go! That's a perfect ending. I wasn't expecting a tie, but Nico made his choice. So I have something special planned for the winners. I think we had a really great finish today. This award goes to Alexis and Summer, who will have to share it with the whole family, because you guys all did a fantastic job. So I'll hand it off to you two, but it belongs to the whole family. Uh, I'm about to cry again. <laughs> so, what does that mean to you after going through this whole thing? Oh, man. It's almost like he's just like, thank you. Like, thank you for actually, like, getting me to do something. It seems like he's so much happier. And that's exactly what you guys did. You know, you lifted his spirit through this process. So even though we made it a competition, you know, you guys made it a way of life. You guys are on the home stretch. You're doing great, Nico's doing great. And because of that, I worked with Chewy.com to put together some really cool items that are gonna help him finish strong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Isaiah, come around, let's bring it in. Pumping up Nico on three, ready? One, two, three. Pumping up Nico! Awesome job, guys. The first time I met Coco, she was all over the place. Obviously, she was a tad overweight, but also had some bad habits, like eating garbage off the street and constantly barking. Let's see if Sari stepped it up since the last time I saw her. We're excited that Travis is coming today. Coco is doing so well since we saw Travis last. I do feel confident that Coco has hit her target weight. I'm, I'm very hopeful. How's it been going? Well, we're so excited to show you the new Coco. She's yeah. like a different dog now. You feel like she's different? Yeah. 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 Oh. I'll go get her. OK, perfect. Oh my gosh, she looks amazing. Oh my, did you go get a different dog? <laughs> <laughs> the infamous Coco. Coco, wow, you look so great. Ah, yeah, I can feel those ribs. Yes, I can. Coco didn't have much weight to lose, but as we all know, the last few pounds are the hardest to shed. Let's see if Coco has reached her target weight. When I first met Coco, she weighed 39 pounds. We set a four-month target weight of 35 pounds. Let's see how much she weighs. Okay. Coco weighs 34 and a half pounds. <laughs> I'm so happy that Coco's lost more weight than expected. It took so much work for Sari and Davis to get her there, I couldn't be more proud. But she'll never be able to maintain that unless her behavior is under control. The last time I was here, one of the biggest problems she had was eating garbage off the street. 
So up ahead, I have a napkin laid out there, and I want to see if you and Coco can walk past it without her eating it. OK. All right. Coco, let's go. Coco, look. Look. She did it. Awesome. Ah. Nice job. That was so great. Good girl. Good girl. That was so great. Good job. You did it. Months ago, Coco was jumping on people. But since she's learned basic obedience, she sits calmly. Back then, we couldn't have a conversation without Coco barking. But after working on the timing with her rewards, Coco sits patiently while we talk. And after consistent practice with walking on the leash, Coco can go anywhere without eating stuff off the street. Coco has done a complete 180, and I'm so proud of her, Sari, and Davis. So I worked with Chewy.com to pick out some really fun things to help with Coco's journey, so I hope she enjoys those. Thank you. And you've done everything I've asked you to do, and because you've put in the hard work, you now have a real emotional support dog to help you. So congratulations. Getting Coco healthy and happy wasn't just about her losing the weight, and it wasn't just about her learning new obedience skills to be a good emotional support dog. It encompassed the whole package, and because they put the work in, they got exactly what they wanted.